Okay, what we're going to work on today is our second stack up example, and that's going to be an engagement stack up. Now, in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use an example that I've hand drawn here. Now, please excuse the crudeness of these sketches, but um, in order to get them done quickly, I just did a hand sketch. So I took a basic pen and I took it apart. There were four pieces. There was a cap, a body, ink cartridge, and the back. And if you take a look, I have some little grooves in the cap, which there's a bump on the body, and that's where it sits. You can kind of see that in the picture right there in that area in the front. That is where it is going to engage right there. Okay, so you can kind of see that. And um, also, if you take a look at the back, there's this little bump here on the back that's going to fit in that little body. So that's what we're going to do. Now, in order to get started, we have to note the um, orientation of the stack up, and we want to figure out how far this pen tip engages into the cap. We want to see how far it goes in. So I'm going to draw my beginning line here, and I'm going to go ahead and draw my arrows on either side. And whenever I'm doing an engagement stack up, I'm looking to make sure that there is overlap. So that means that this needs to be the negative, and that means this will need to be the positive. So when I do my stack up sheet, you'll see that I'll set it up a little bit differently. Um, this is very similar to the last time that we set ours up, but now our orientation is slightly different because I've got the plus on the left side, okay? So it's critical that we do that. Now going back to my picture, you'll see that I'm gonna start with the cap. Now I'm gonna start right here at this edge and I'm gonna go into where these, this groove is and go through the groove. So the very first mention in my stack up is going to be this 15 plus or minus 0.3 and it's going in that negative direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in here. And I'm gonna say cap depth of Okay, and that is in the negative direction. Going back to my picture, the next dimension I'm going to have is this three. That is the width of the group, plus or minus 0 0.15. Three, plus or minus 0 0.15. And I'm going to say cap groove width. And that is also in the negative direction. Going back to the picture again, and you can see that right at the front of that groove, that's where the body touches the cap. So now I can jump over to the body and get my dimensions there. Now I'm interested in getting to this groove in the body. So if I take a look, I'm going to pretend I'm a tiny ant, and I'm going to basically be traveling back and eventually getting to that edge. Okay. But in order to do that, I have to go through the entire thickness of the part and go backwards in the other direction for that. So my very first dimension for the particular, uh, for the body is going to be this 121 plus or minus 0.5. So I will go back to my tolerance stack up and type in my 121, 0 0.5, and I'm going to call this my body entire, let will see my body length. And that is going in the positive direction in this case. Okay, going back to my picture, I'm now going to start moving back in the negative direction. I've got two dimensions I have to go through. I've got this three because that's where the groove in the back starts. So I've got the three plus or minus 0.25. Three plus or minus 0.25. And I'm going to say, body, groove, depth, and that is in the negative direction, I'll mark my minus. Going back to the picture, now I can do the groove width, which is 2.5 plus or minus 0 0.1. 2.5 plus or minus 0.1. And that, again, is in the minus direction. 
okay? Going back to my picture, right there at that point is right where the back engages at the beginning of this bump. So we are in good shape. Now I'm at that point, I can jump back to the back part of the pen, and that's my first dimension. I eventually want to get to this area in the pen. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and mark those. And my first dimension with the back is that, that bump width, which is 1.9 plus or minus 0.1. And that is going in the positive direction. I'll mark that as my positive. Going back to my picture again. Okay, once I get to that point, it's going to allow me to go all the way to the back, which is what I'm going to try to get to here. So I'm going from this point all the way to the back. Okay, so that dimension is 18 plus or minus 0.15, and it's still moving in the positive direction. In the positive direction. Going back to the picture, I can finally get to this point right here, which is where the box, sorry, where the ink cartridge engages. So that's my last dimension that I need in the back is the 2.5. And that tolerance is 0.2. And that is going in the negative direction. Now that I'm finally going back to the picture, I'm finally touching the ink cartridge. So this edge right here is touching the very back of the ink cartridge. And I want to get to this front edge. So I will go through both of these dimensions and they will be going in the negative direction. So I have my 131.5 plus or minus 0.3. That is negative. And then my last dimension, going back to my picture, is the tip length, and that is the 7.2 plus or minus 0.2. And that is also in the negative direction. These are all the tolerances that I have in my stack up. So I'm going to go ahead and put my underline underneath to signal that I'm going to do my calculation. Just as I did in my clearance stack up, I'm going to go equals. And I'm going to use these minuses and pluses to, to basically dictate if I'm going to add or subtract a number. Now this very first one is a minus, so I'll click minus, and then before I click on that cell, I'm going to do minus again because there's a minus. I'll do a plus because there's a plus. Continuing down, there's a minus. There's a minus. There's a plus. There's a plus. A minus. Another minus. And then finally, the last minus, okay? And that's how much engagement I have. Now, I've got all these tolerances, and remember, the tolerances, I don't need to account for the orientation. I can just go ahead and do my sum of all the tolerances here. Close it, and there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a name, engagement of tip to cap and I'm finished. But if you take a look at this, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dimensions in the stack up. It is very unlikely 
that when I do this calculation or that when we actually measure the parts, that we're going to have this high of a tolerance. It is very unlikely that we are going to be at the high end for every single one of these dimensions. So in general, if you have more than seven dimensions in a stack up, you want to do a statistical tolerance. So I'm going to go ahead and type in statistical here. Now the statistical is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares. So if you think about it, that is going to be a lot of work to square each one of these, add them up, and then take the square root. However, Excel has a really nice formula that does that automatically for you. We're going to actually combine two formulas. So I'm going to say equals SQRT, because that will be done last. Then I'm going to do sum SQ, open parenthesis again. I'm going to highlight all my original tolerances. Be very careful that you do not highlight the sum. Close it, close it again, and then hit enter. And there is your statistical tolerance. Now you can see right now this formats this to a long dimension, so excuse me, a long decimal place. So if we wanted to, we could reformat that. Okay? And that is how you do an engagement stack up.